All right. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Blessed Wednesday to each and every single one of you that are already on. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the St. John virtual worship experience. Amen. Bible study. Here we are. We are back. And I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is my joy. It is my complete honor. Oh, yes, it is to be with you all tonight. And I thank you all for joining me as we come together as a church family. God bless you, St. John. Greetings to you and to all of our family and friends and supporters of the ministry. God is faithful and I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful. I'm glad God is so good and he just keeps on doing great things. Mighty are the works of his hands. And we thank him so, so much. It's been a little while since we've been together in this format, uh, in this setting. And so we're going to just move into our time of fellowship around the word of God. And I want to invite your prayerful attention to God's word. But before we do that, of course, I want us to pray together as a family. So let us just go ahead and pray. And of course, I just want to always begin with a warm welcome. Amen. Thank you so much for your attendance tonight. We're going to get right into the word, but let's 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 go ahead and pray. Let's talk to the Lord because we need to do that. Let us pray at this time. God of grace, we say thank you first and foremost for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for anointing us and giving us the oil of gladness for the spirit of heaviness. We thank you for meeting us here tonight in fellowship as you always do. It's not necessarily about your presence being God here because you're omnipotent and you're omniscient. You're the God who is everywhere at the same time. Uh, you're omnipresent. Uh, but God, we want your spirit to move. We need your power to flow and function and operate even right now. So spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me as the teacher, fall fresh on your people. Uh, those that are watching and tuned in, God, be with us all. Thank you for bringing us to this 7 p.m. Central Standard Time hour of fellowship and worship. And God, we thank you so much for your wonderful grace that touches us and helps us, Lord. And we just ask you, God, to just have your way. I pray as always that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And I pray, God, that you would give your people ears and hearts of receptivity so that we can go down from this place better than when we came, God. We thank you, God, that every time we go into worship, it's a going up experience. So as we go up and meet you in your word, we pray, God, that you would just help our minds and our hearts. And I'm so grateful, God, I was reading and praying earlier today and I saw a wonderful line that said that every single time we meet you in your word, your Holy Spirit meets us there and illuminates the word. You make the word come alive. And we thank you for that. And I pray, Jesus, that your word would spark and ignite a fire, much like Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 20, Jeremiah said that I was going to stop preaching and prophesying and teaching, but he said I couldn't because the word of God was like a fire shut up in my bones. And I pray for that fire to ignite us here tonight, that we would get on the same sheet of music, that we'd be on the same page, God, and that your spirit would be in control as our divine leader, comforter, keeper, and wonderful presence, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you're doing and thank you right now. And we count this prayer done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. As always, God is just good, good, good. And I'm grateful to be with you all. And I thank you all so much for joining me here. All right, y'all, we are almost at the conclusion of our uh, Ephesians study. We've been in this study for the last several months and we have practically touched, we have touched every single verse with the exception of the final three verses. And we'll pick up in that study next week. But tonight, I want to look at verses 18, 19, and 20. If you have your Bibles, join with me 
in the final chapter of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, and we want to look at verses 18 through 20, just three verses tonight, and then the next week we will look at the final three verses, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, it's 21 through 24, so that's four verses next week. Tonight is three verses, 18, 19, and 20, Ephesians chapter 6. I have selected for us for the reading the English Standard Version of God's Word. So this translation, it's a, it's a famous preacher, a wonderful young preacher that I really admire, Dr. Charlie Dates. He pastors in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I was in a conference, the E.K. Bailey Preaching Conference, Expository Preaching Conference some years ago, and uh, I sat in on one of his sessions, and he talked about how the English Standard Version is a hybrid. It's really a, uh, a combination of the NIV and the New King James Version. And uh, the English Standard Version is a culmination of those two. Amen. So it's a good translation. It's a good translation. It's more modern. Amen. Okay. English Standard Version of God's Word, Ephesians 6, verses 18 through 20, reads like this. It says, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints, verse 19, and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Verse 20 concludes, it says, for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Hallelujah tonight for the reading of God's word. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy and matchless word. Of course, we know that the grass withers and the flower thereof faded away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. With the, with the power of the Holy Spirit and with your prayers, y'all, I just want to tag this text in this teaching time tonight. Pray, pray, and pray. Pray, pray, and pray. Okay? The emphasis of tonight's lesson is centered around that matter, and that is prayer. And how necessary and how important it is for us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to pray, to talk to God, to communicate with God, to keep the prayer lines with heaven open, always talking to God, functioning in the spirit as we communicate with God through prayer. And so... As we engage this text, I want us to consider what we've already looked at. We've already looked at the armor of God that Paul mentioned in verses 10 through 17. The last two times that we were together, I taught from the theme, stand firm. If you, caught, if you all remember, um, we talked about standing firm as we put on the whole armor of God, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth. Feet shod with the gospel of peace. In your right hand, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In your left hand, the shield of faith, which will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. This is the full armor of God that Paul talks about in verses 10 through 17. And we took our time and we worked through that text and we broke it up into two segments. Verses 10 through 13, we looked at stand firm part one. And then the last time we were together, we looked at Stand Firm Part 2 in verses 14 through 17. Can I tell you tonight right now that in order for the armor that we've been called to put on to work, we've got to bathe the armor in prayer. That prayer is the culmination of the spiritual armor. That's exactly why Paul follows up. Verses 10 through 17 with verse 18. And he says what, y'all? We just read it. He says, praying at all times in the spirit. Praying at all times in the spirit. With all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert. Watchful, he says. With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Paul finishes with prayer. And he what we what we will initiate tonight is what he concludes as it relates to this text, meaning the armor will only work when we bathe it in prayer. And so he finishes with prayer, which is the divine means of putting on our spiritual armor, 
which is a reflection of the person and work of Jesus Christ on our behalf. As Christian spiritual resources are assessed through relational communication with God. Prayer must be woven into all of life. Yeah, we need to stay in regular communication with God and pray in the spirit in order to access heaven's authority for intervention on earth. Yes, Lord. In other words, we must be on the same page as the spirit utilizing spiritual wisdom. The most powerful way to do that is to pray God's word back to him and apply it to your situation. Did y'all hear that? I'm trying to encourage someone here tonight to pray God's word back to him. Someone might be wondering, how do I do that? What you do is you get in the word, okay? You read and study, memorize and apply that word by studying to show yourself approved and then you hide the word, the psalmist talks about it, hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God. As you hide that word in the moment of trial, in the moment of test, in the moment of temptation, you can take that word out because you've taken time to hide it in at the moment of test, trial, and tribulation. You can take the word out and put it into application. And you're just quoting the word back to God. I shall live and not die. Because the word of God says so. I am the head and not the tail because the word of God says so. I am above and not beneath because the word of God says so. This is you, the believer, praying the word back to God. You got to talk to God that way in your prayer time. You got to get in the spirit, Ephesians 6, 18 says. You got to tell God, Lord, I know you shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. Philippians 4 verse 19. You got to tell God, I know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are thee called according to your purpose. Romans 8, 28. You got to pray the word of God back to God. The problem, I got to say it, I got to say it. The problem with the church is we don't know the word because we don't get in the word. And we think the preacher is the only person that is authorized to get in the word and show us the word. No, the believer, you worshiper, child of God, praise and worshiper. It's your responsibility to get in the word. It's your responsibility to make time for the word. I preach and teach all the time. Y'all should be tired of me saying it, but you got to develop a devotional life. You, yes, you that I'm talking to right now, you're listening to me and looking at me. You have to have your own devotional life. You cannot rely on the preacher on Sunday morning to say, turn with me in your Bibles and think that all week long, that's your only Bible study. No, you got to get in the word of God every single day. If you're going to win. Who wants to win? I want to win. I want to be a winner. I, I, I hate losing. I'm, I'm, I've always been competitive that way. My son got the same spirit. We hate losing. We like to win. Well, as believers, we can win in the warfare as we do what the word of God instructs us to do. And so we win by getting in the word, applying the word and praying the word back to God. The promises of God are yes and amen through Christ Jesus, because that's what the word of God says. As we trust in God with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding and in all of our ways, acknowledge him. He will direct our path because that's what Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says. We got to know the word, get in the word, study the word, understand the word, comprehend the word of God. Make time for the word. Amen. Prayer, y'all. Prayer is the energy that enables the Christian soldier to wear the armor and wield the sword. We cannot fight the battle in our own power. Did y'all hear that? You cannot fight this fight. I'm talking about the fight of spiritual warfare. You can't do it by yourself. You're going to lose. You're going to fall apart like a cheap suit every time. The enemy will eat you up and spit you out because he is the enemy of our souls. He's the adversaries of our lives. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants you to look bad to God and make God look bad to you. He's a liar and a deceiver. He's been lying since the beginning of time. He's good at what he does. 
because he's been doing it for thousands of years. So he's very efficient and proficient in what he does. And that ought to put us on defense. That ought to put us on alert that we've got to be on our game. We've got to be on point when it comes to our relationship with God. And we've got to appropriate the word of God over our lives. I teach and preach all the time that we got to speak it until we see it. I know it might look down, drab, and downtrodden right now. I know it might look terrible and horrible right now. But weeping, Psalm verse, Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. You got to hang on in there. Hallelujah. You got to be steadfast. Philippians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 58. Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We got to get in the word and we got to pray the word back to God and we cannot fight the battle in our own power. No matter how strong or talented we may think we are. The weapons for warfare are spiritual because they are rooted in prayer, which is the Christian's powerful resource. Prayer is to permeate believers' lives as a universal practice, as seen by the use of all four times. And we're, going to, we're about to get into this. Four times we saw that term all in these three verses. He says at all times, verse 18. He says, with all prayers, verse 18. He says, with all perseverance, verse 18. He says, for all the saints, verse number 18, y'all. Prayer in the spirit is a form of worship enabled by the spirit of God who intercedes on behalf of the person who prays. All right. Now, let me share this with you all because. Uh, you need to be reminded about this. I've shared this a number of times and I want to say it again right now. And I want to be as clear as I can as it relates to how you pray. OK, we as believers, we as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the word of God, we pray a triune prayer because we serve a triune God. OK, and I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. We pray a triune prayer. Because we serve a triune God. What are you talking about, Pastor Thomas? What I'm saying is, when you pray, you ought to pray a triune prayer, okay? Because we serve a God who is comprised of three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is the initiator. God the Son is the mediator. God the Holy Spirit is the administrator. All right. We pray a triune prayer because we serve a triune God. And when you pray, you ought to pray like this. You pray to God, the father, because he's the initiator. You pray through God, the son, because he's the mediator. And you pray by the Holy Spirit because he is the administrator. You pray to, I'm going to say it again, God, the father, the initiator. You pray through. God the Son, because he's our mediator. And you pray by God the Holy Spirit because he is our administrator. We pray a triune prayer because we serve a triune God and we are a triune church and we serve a triune God who has all power. He's comprised of three persons and we know him because he's made himself known through the word of God. All right. And so this is what we see in the text tonight, y'all. And, and I'm going to leave you all alone. The text shows us, firstly, three things. Verse number 18, it shows us when, how, and whom. And I don't know if you caught it, but it's right here at verse number 18. When, how, and whom. When should the believer pray, y'all? Verse 18 says, praying at all times. We should pray at all times. That doesn't mean that you know, you're so consumed in prayer that you don't work. Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. You gotta work. You can't be so consumed in your spiritual life and so consumed in prayer and so consumed in Bible meditation that you never work. Bible isn't referring to praying at all times as if you walk around just saying prayers all day long. No, you pray at all times in the spirit. In other words, you have a praying spirit throughout the course of the day as you work. Lord, help me 
as you work, Lord, guide me. As you do your job uh, from nine to five or eight to five or however you do whatever you do, however long you work, as you drive, as you communicate throughout the day, as you converse with your co-workers, your peers, your colleagues, your supervisor, your manager, as you do whatever it is you do, you have a praying spirit. Lord, help me uh, to let my light shine so that people know who I represent. When that conversation starts to go left, when that conversation starts to move to gossip, you start praying, Lord, help me to turn this thing around or help me to remove myself from this type of communication because this is not going to bring you glory. This is not what I've been called to be about. I've been called to be the light of the earth and the, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So my representation, my communication, my fellowship, my worship, who I am, who I am, who I've been called to be says that I can't be caught up doing certain things, living certain type of ways because I am to be the light. I am to be stalked. I am to preserve and to uh, season situations and circumstances. I am to encourage, not tear people down through gossip and negativity. I am to build people up through edification. And so you pray at all times, verse 18. Number two, we looked at how the believer, well, we looked at when the believer should pray, but number two, how should the believer pray? The text says, with all prayer and supplication. That's how you pray. You pray with all prayer and all supplication. And what that means is you are praying as you pray. You're offering God petitions of thanksgiving. You're offering God uh, pleas of mercy. You're saying, God, have mercy on me. You're giving him adoration. You're giving him uh, confession. You're giving him thanksgiving. You're giving him supplication. There's this wonderful acrostic for prayer. Uh, that I was taught and trained many, many years ago. It's called the ACTS, A-C-T-S, the ACTS acrostic, ACTS, A-C-T-S. A stands for adoration, C stands for confession, T stands for thanksgiving, S stands for supplication. That's a form of prayer that you can apply to your own prayer life. That when you begin to pray, you ought to firstly give God adoration. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I bless your name. Then you move from adoration to confession. You start confessing. Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up. I was mean. I was ugly. I was wrong. Lord, I confess my sins. I had a bad spirit. I had a bad attitude. I didn't treat my neighbor right. I didn't treat my spouse right. I didn't do right in this situation. You confess that to the Lord. He's faithful and just. First John 1 9 says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins if we confess our sins. It's adoration, it's confession, but then thirdly, it's thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. Even before you do what I need you to do, thank you. Even before you bless my family and bless my finances and bless my future, Thank you. Even before you bless St. John, thank you. Even before you grow St. John, thank you. Even before you bless our ministries and bless our outreach and bless everything that we do as a church family, thank you. You give God thanksgiving. But then finally, you give God supplication. Supplication, supplication speaks to giving him please by way you are, uh, you're, you're offering to him uh, what you need to offer to him as it relates to whatever the need is in your life, supplications. Lord, I need you to intervene in my situation, in my personal life, in my public life, in my school life, in my home life, in all areas of life, supplication, prayers of supplication. So it's, at, it's adoration, it's confession, it's thanksgiving, and then it is supplication. That's how the believers should pray. According to verse number 18. But then lastly, y'all, whom should the believer pray for? The text says right here, I'm in verse 18. It says that you ought to pray for all the saints. You ought to pray for the universal church. That's all, that's the church worldwide, globally. But you ought to also pray for your local church, St. John. Yes. You ought to pray for other churches, you know, because we're brothers and sisters in this work of the ministry and in this work of uh, the kingdom uh, of God, but you ought to pray for the universal church and for the local church. You ought to just pray for all the saints because we're all battling. We're all going through situations and we need God. We need his intervention. We need 
his power. We need him to come into our personal space. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So when should the believer pray? At all times. How should the believer pray? With all prayer and supplication. Whom should the believer pray for? All the saints. I'm almost done, y'all. But I want to show you one more thing, and I'm going to close out. Verse 18, this is what the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. Verse 18 is a prayer of intimacy because it's comprised of what we just saw. We saw when, we saw how, and we saw whom. And, and what I want to challenge us to do, y'all, is when you pray, you are blocking out all distractions. And when you pray, you ought to mean to pray. I shared Sunday in the message, my, my second point, if y'all can remember, was you ought to be deliberate. That when you pray, you ought to pray on purpose. That you ought to pray like you want to pray. Don't just get down on your knees and say, you know, now nah, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. You know, that's elementary prayers. That's cool. You know, when you're nine, that's cool. You know, when you're five. But when you grow up in the faith and when you've gone through some things, when you face some heartache and heartbreak, when you've gone through some loss of job and wages and compensation and you need some things from the Lord, you don't just get down on your knees and go through the motions. No, deliberately, intentionally, you say, God, now it's me now. You know me. I'm a worshiper. I love you and I need you and I need you right now. I need you to come into my space. I need you to come into my situation. I need you to come into my home. I've got some problems right now. I got some issues right now. I need you and I need you right now. Come on in the room, God. Take charge of my life. Take charge of my home. Take charge of my marriage. Take charge of my situation. I need you and you ought to pray a prayer of intimacy. That's what I believe verse 18 is designed to show us. That when you pray, you ought to pray a prayer where you are intimately connected to God. You're not playing prayer. You're not just going through the motions. You're not just going through the activity. It's for real. It's a prayer of intimacy. Then verse 19 is a prayer of intercession. Watch the text, y'all. Verse 19. It says, and also for me, Paul gets real intimate, but he also asks for the intercession of the church of Ephesus, because this is where the letter is being written to. It's being written to the church of Ephesus, but this letter was written to Ephesus specifically, but it went to all the churches that Paul planted. He planted the church in Colossae, the church in Philippi, uh, the church in Berea, uh, the church in Asia Minor, all the churches in Asia Minor. He planted all these churches, you know, and this letter went to all the churches, but he says, and also for me, verse 19, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly, he says, to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. This is a prayer of intercession. Paul is saying, now, I need the saints of God to cover me in prayer as I go about planting churches, pastoring churches, uh, sending leaders to individual churches. Paul left Timothy in charge of the church of Ephesus. And then Paul went over to Crete and he left Titus in charge of the church over there. And he, those were his sons in the ministry. Uh, and, and that's why he wrote the pastoral epistles, first and second Timothy and, and Titus, the pastoral epistles. He wrote those for those pastors. But he says to the church at Ephesus, I need y'all to lift me to the Lord and cover me in prayer because I need to open my mouth boldly. I can't be ashamed of the gospel. Romans chapter one, verse 16, because it is the power of God unto salvation. I can't be ashamed when I preach and I can't be scared because this work requires that I preach with boldness. This work requires that I preach with effectiveness through the power of the Holy Spirit. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So I've got to preach that way, he says, but I, I can only do it when the prayers of intercession are covering me. So verse 18 is a prayer of intimacy. Verse 19 is a prayer of intercession, but I got to leave you when I tell you this. Verse 20 is a prayer of intestinal fortitude. Oh, glory. I like that. I do. And let me tell you why I like it. Look at verse number 20. And really, we saw it in verse 19 as we lead into verse number 20, because he says, I need y'all to cover me in prayer, 19 intercession. 
when I open my mouth boldly, that's where I'm going with it, to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly, there it is again, as I ought to speak, boldly. I'm telling you tonight, brothers and sisters, that when we pray a prayer for intestinal fortitude, this is the Apostle Paul asking the saints of God in Ephesus and all over, and me asking you, St. John, to cover me as your pastor because I need a prayer for intestinal fortitude because intestinal fortitude speaks of boldness, it speaks of courage, it speaks of having guts, it speaks of having a backbone, hallelujah, it speaks of strength, and it speaks of toughness because this kind of work, ministry, is not for the faint of heart. You see, it's not for the weak because if it were for the weak, I would have gave up five years ago. I would have gave up when I first started in the ministry 20 years ago preaching. I would have gave up because, you know, the enemy gets into your mind. He gets into your spirit. Uh, he'll send negativity your way and people will say some negative things about you. I wish I had a church tonight. People will speak negative things in your spirit. Speak, people will try to, uh, you know, lie about you and lie about your character and lie about your integrity, insult you and do all of these things. And, and, and you've got to have some intestinal fortitude. You've got to have some guts. You've got to have some boldness, some courage. You've got to have a backbone. You can't be weak. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't be squirmish about this thing. You've got to be steadfast. You've got to be settled about the work of the ministry. You've got to have your mind made up. I'm serving the Lord. Come hell or high water. I will not be deterred. I will not be discouraged. I will not give up. I will not throw in the towel. I will not wave the white flag. I'm in this thing to win and I'm in this to the end. I, I've got a, I've got a calling on my life. I've got a mission. I've got a purpose. I've got a destiny to fulfill and I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to be weak in the work because the saints of God are praying for me. Amen. Paul says, I need you to pray for my intestinal fortitude. I need you to cover me in intercession. I need you to pray prayers of intimacy. Hallelujah. You got to pray, pray, and pray, y'all. This is what the Lord told me to tell y'all tonight, that we got to pray, we got to pray, and we got to pray. You got to pray when you should pray, all times, 18. How should you pray? With prayer and supplication. Whom should you pray for? All the saints. And I'm not just saying pray for me, and I do need your prayers. Pray for yourselves. Pray for your families. We're going to close this time out in prayer, but pray for one another. Pray for your brothers and sisters in the work of the kingdom building because we need intercession for one another. We need to be praying for each other. I pray for you. You pray for me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need should be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Y'all remember that song, Hezekiah Walker? Beautiful song. Hallelujah. Uh, that's the word for tonight, y'all. Pray, pray, and pray. Pray, Pray and pray. And we, we're going to do just that in just a moment. Before we close out in prayer, uh, it, it's always my assignment to share with you all and set you up for a blessing as I share uh, that you can give your offerings, your tithes and your offerings to the church. Uh, if you did not have the opportunity to give this past Sunday, you can give tonight. This is a good night to give uh, your tithes and your offerings as an act of worship. And I don't want you to give accidentally. I want you to give on purpose, deliberately, because God is a deliberate God and he wants us to be deliberate Christians. And when you give, you give the tithe, the tenth. You give 10% of every increase. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Amen. And as you give, God increases you. Amen. And so you can give in a number of ways. You can give by going to the St. John website. It's St. John MBC on gray.org. And you can click on the term give on the left hand side. You'll see it on our website homepage. You can also text the word give to the phone number 210-529-8631. Again, that number is 
529-829-8631. You can also, and many of you have already done this, you can download the Tidely app on your smart device right now. If you haven't, you can download the Tidely app and you can type in St. John NBC in the search box and you'll see our church there and you can give through that digital format. So there's a number of ways that you can give. Of course, we take in-person givings uh, of the tithes and the offerings on Sunday morning, but you can also finally give by way of mail. You can mail in your gifts to our physical address, St. John NBC. Uh, our physical address is 2222 Gray. 2222 Gray Street, Houston, Texas, 77003. Amen. God bless you for your stewardship. May the Lord continue to uh, overflow you and expand you and grow you in wonderful ways. Amen. We're going to pray now. We're going to close out in prayer. Uh, and so I want us to please continue to lift up Deacon J.T. Hearn. Amen. And Sister J.J. Hearn. Let's lift them to the Lord. Uh, God is in control, of course. And so we, uh, we're covering him. And uh, we're covering Sister JJ as well. Let's continue to pray for De Deacon Gene Williams as well as he rehabs. Amen. I got a praise report from Sister Lorraine Williams last night that the rehab is going well and God is blessing him and he's going to be better than ever. Amen. He's going to be better for this. Amen. It's something about going through a storm and God brings you out of that storm. Your praise is bigger. Your smile is bigger. You got more joy. Oh, yeah, you know, you know, God is faithful. And so it's something about God blessing us and and beautifying us after having gone through something. And so Deacon Gene Williams, we love you. We're praying for you, Sister Lorraine Williams. We love you. We're praying for you both, lifting you all to the Lord. Let's pray for Sister Lola McClung. Let's keep her covered in prayer and pray for her in the name of Jesus Christ. And there's so many other names on our prayer list, but let's pray for all of our names and let's pray for one another. Let's close out right now as I lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for everything that you've done tonight. We thank you for everything that you've spoken to our hearts tonight. And we pray, Jesus Christ, that you would help us to pray, pray, and pray. That you would help us to pray without ceasing. That you would help us to pray for all of the saints. That you would help us to pray for the work of the ministry to go forward at our church. We pray for for the local church here, St. John, but we also pray for the universal church, the church that represents all churches all over the globe, every church that's open in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for these churches, that the word of God will go forth. I pray for the leaders of the churches, the pastors, uh, the deacons, uh, the trustees, the elders, all of the leaders in the church, God, I lift us to you now. And I pray, God, that you would cover us and keep us encouraged, Lord. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing. Help us to keep the faith. Help us to hold fast to the promises that you prescribed in your word. Help us, God, as a church family, to pray the word back to you. Help us, Lord, to get in the word, know the word, so that we can pray the word back to you. We can't pray it until we know it, until we read it, until we study it, until we memorize it. So help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to make the word of God a priority in our lives. I'm praying for Deacon J.T. Hearn tonight, Lord. Touch him right now, right where he is, in the name of Jesus. Cover him, keep him, touch him, bless him, Lord. And pray for his caregiver, Sister J.J. Hearn, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for her being such a great support to her husband. We also pray for Deacon Gene Williams. Touch him, Lord, bless him, Lord. Continue to heal his body, in the name of Jesus Touch Sister Lorraine Williams. She's giving great care to her husband. Bless them both right now in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Sister Lola McClung in a great way. Touch her, bless her, and keep her right now. We pray for every name on our prayer list, God. Every situation, every circumstance, God. We're praying, praying, praying for the St. John Church. Every member, every supporter of our ministry. Thank you so much, God. In the name of Jesus, we count this prayer done. Amen and praise God. I love you all so much, St. John. I will see you on Sunday morning. And prayerfully, you can join me for prayer tomorrow, 12 noon. We pray every Thursday. We are back into our normal flow of activities. And we will be praying together tomorrow at 12 noon. All of the information is on our Facebook page. Check it out. Join me in prayer tomorrow. Thank you so much. Amen. I love you. Pray for me, please. I need your prayers always. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. God bless you. Love you, Sage.